morning, everyone. Um, hate to say it, but we've got some math homework. So pull out your bulletin and a pen. And what I'm going to do this morning is share a little bit with you about our giving patterns over the past year, which are kind of indicative of what we have been experience, we're experiencing for 2015 as well. Um, and so if you take out your pen and your chart, so what I'm going to do is give you numbers for each giving category. And as we move up the chart, I'd like you to take your pen and write down exactly that number so you can see what our giving patterns are. And hopefully we can glean some information about that, about what it means for us to have glad and generous hearts and step up in our own individual giving. So as I read this number, just get your pen ready and go. Um, so let's see, for each number of households, um, this will be the number. So it's um, what it's not your weekly pledge amount, but the total average giving. It can be in the it, like a pledged amount, or it can be the amount that is given in the offering plate. So at the beginning of 2014, St. John's had 397 member households. We have a record of contributions from 263 of those 397 member households during 2014. We do not have any record of any contribution from 134 households. So on the first step, just right here, where it says zero to four, at the left hand of the chart, write 134 plus 78, which is 212. So the 134 that did not give plus 78 who gave between zero and four dollars equals 212 households. So 212 is the number of member households between zero and four dollars per week. Um, now move up to the next step, which reflects a range of giving from five dollars to nine dollars per week. 37 households contributed an amount within this range. So write 37 on the top of the second step right there. Now moving on up, 36 households contributed between ten dollars and nineteen dollars per week in 2014. Right. 36 on the top of the third step. And this is a significant step because the median or most common contribution of $15.39 per week falls on or below this step. In other words, 50% of our 236 contributing households gave $15.39 or, or less per week. And if you add up the 139 households from which we have no record of contribution, you see that two-thirds of our total number of member households are on the first three steps, and one-third are above. So these first three encompass the majority of our congregation. So continuing on up the steps, I think you get the idea of where to write it in, so I'll move a little bit faster. So six member households contributed between $20 and $29 per week. So write in the number six. 39 member households contributed between $30 and $39 per week. 13 member households contributed between $40 and $49 per week. And so I'll, st I'll pause on this stat because this is where the mean average contribution is found. So while the median or the most common contribution of $15.39 per week, the average contribution is $46.02 per week. So by comparison, that is almost exactly the same average as the entire Diocese of Wyoming. The average contribution of the Episcopal Church as a whole is $49.15, or $3 more per week. So a little bit more math for you. Hang in there. <laughs> so continuing on up the steps, 15 member households contributed between $50 and $74 per week. 13 member households contributed between $75 and $99 per week. 10 member households contributed between $100 and $149 per week. 3 member households contributed between $150 and $199 per week. And last step is 13 member households contributed $200 or more per week. I know that's a lot of numbers, so does anybody need any repeats? We're good. Okay. If, you, if you're afraid to ask, come find me after church. So thanks for bearing with me. So we know that the Episcopal Church teaches the tithe, or 10% of our annual household income, which is the biblical standard for giving. 
And based on the median income in Teton County, which is $68,000, we believe our median, so that group that gives $15.39 per week, that represents about 1.2% of annual income. So gleaning from this, you know, we really think that our, our, from a spiritual perspective, our members will benefit a great deal from considering a little bit more generosity. And so the stewardship emphasis here is not based on the church's need to receive, but on the giver's need to give. Christians believe that everything we have, whether spent, saved, or given away, is a sacred trust from God. And this is our way of not being possessed by our possessions. Um, you know, giving for my husband and me is a demonstrable way for us to show our faith that God will continue providing for us no matter what. Um, those of you who know me know that I have a little girl who's almost a year old. My dad and stepmom are in town to help us celebrate for her one-year birthday on Tuesday. And so she's um, a charming, gorgeous, fabulous little banshee. She's, <laughs> she's kind of running, running our lives, not running, running our lives. And um, last night I was just so exhausted and I'm bone tired and frayed and tired. And so, you know, I was rocking her to sleep and I was just praying. I was thinking, oh God, please take care of me so I can take care of the people who need me in my life. I know this is a very familiar thing to most of you in this crowd. So, you know, this morning, like last night was the first night that she slept through the night in over two months. So God answered my prayer, and I woke up with great as my faithfulness running through my head. I was just, wow, this is really amazing. God really does provide, whether it's a night of sleep or financial financial stability for us when we need it. And, um, you know, we're so blessed and it's to, to be able to look around and live in this place where we can just see very evidently God's joy and abundance in our lives. And so just think about giving a little bit more. And... Um, so if you're wondering what this might look like in your life, um, turn the sheet over, the one with the with all the math homework on it. So turn it over and look at the giving chart on that other side. And it shows you what growing one or more steps in generosity would look like. So for most, most of us, it's a very small amount if we were to grow 1% per week. So you can see on the left-hand side of the chart your weekly income. And then you can see the percentages at the top and what that dollar figure would actually look like. So consider what it would look like to move up 1% of the chart. Um, it's just one way of just showing God that I have faith that you're going to provide what I need in my life. Um, so moving on, of course, giving will benefit you, but it'll also benefit our church. And you know, we have this inevitable result of our combined faithful spiritual. Um, stewardship and that if we give more we'll be able to do more as a community Jesus said seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all the rest will be added he also said where your treasure is there will your heart be also therefore St. John's mission will be blessed by our, by our deeper heartfelt commitment and the church's income can be used for extraordinary things that this parish loves to do to benefit the needy in our community and the world to address social ills in the name of Christ, to provide a base of operation for nonprofit organizations that are vital to this community. And frankly, I need you too, as a mom. I look at my little girl and I pray that she's part of a vibrant Christian community. And I see this place as her church home. And I pray that she'll be brave and courageous and be able to stand up against the evils of this world. And I know that she's gonna need a foundation and a family of Christ around her to be able to do that. So that said, my own personal little pitch, <laughs> but um, take this chart with you. Study it and pray about it and consider our challenge to grow at least one step in the coming year. Consider growing toward the tithe of 10% as your goal in giving to God in the next few years. And consider the impact growth and generosity will have in your spiritual life and that of the kingdom of God and then your own church family here in Jackson. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, find me afterwards.